So when I was preparing this presentation, I was looking for some ways to spice it up a little bit. So I found uh, Oscar Wilde's quotes for you. So they will be inside the presentation a little bit. And this is the first one, because I think it relates to prep very well. Everything about, in the world is about sex, except sex. Sex is about power. Uh, okay, so, uh, these slides have already been presented. It's just a brief review. Um, 160,000 people are diagnosed with HIV in the European uh, region, majority in the East, obviously. Uh, the transmission through DIFA, um, mostly uh, MSM-driven epidemics in the uh, West and Central Europe and heterosexually-driven epidemics uh, in the East, uh, and also significant migration, so this is just to uh, set up the scene. Uh, and we obviously know that every person who is linked to care and is receiving antiretrovirals will be undetectable and partner study tells us very strongly that they will also be uh, untransmissible, so this is U equals U statement. But on the other hand, we also know the molecular data uh, and other data that the person who is infected with HIV will most likely transmit it to the second person within one and a half, two years of infection of the index case. So uh, we know that uh, only treatment as prevention is not enough, but we need another form of uh, another form of protection. And this one you have already seen, but please take a look. This is uh, what has been happening most likely to the quick linkage to care, expansion of testing and PrEP as well in the last two years uh, in uh, MSM populations in Europe. So there has been first, first time in the history decline over the last two years. And these are the countries which have rolled out most significantly the diagnostics. And some of these countries uh, have uh, PrEP available. Not all of them, for example, Spain doesn't have it available in the pharmacy, but they do have it in the informal setting uh, in the, as the PrEP online orders. So the systems are very divergent, more and more countries approved PrEP. So now, uh, as Pavel has just told me, Germany has, his, has it approved uh, free of charge. Uh, obviously, France, um, Scotland, Norway, and more and more countries uh, are expanding that. So if we think about the implementation uh, and where do we go uh, having this wonderful tool, we have to think about the costs and uh, possibility, actually. Uh, so there are there, there are much there are many differences. Uh, there are uh, ongoing pilot projects regarding prep, and there are sites where um, prep is nationally available. And now the first question, uh, which I would like to bear in mind, is that knowing that prep is effective, knowing that it may change the epidemiology, knowing that it is a, an effective tool to stop new transmissions, do we, need, do we need any more demonstrations? I don't think so. I don't think we need any more demonstration at the country levels. Uh, there are many settings where generics are available. Uh, they are either not reimbursed or, or not fully reimbursed. In our setting in Poland, generic tenofovir, uh, desoproxyl tenofovir uh, plus emtricitabine costs 120 slots, which is 30 euros per month. Uh, and we argue that uh, this is cheap enough for most of the people to just buy it, because majority of our people, when they go for the party, they spend more during one night on uh, alcohol than on uh, possible prep. So it's not expensive. Uh, obviously, for young people, the best option would be to have it reimbursed, but politically, we do not see such a possibility in the near future. Also, uh, please note that sometimes it's restricted to infectious diseases clinic, and uh, actually, uh, 
infectious diseases specialists are the most comfortable with PrEP. Uh, we have um, discussed it with primary healthcare providers in Poland. They are very afraid of harm uh, possible uh, to be done with PrEP. We do not believe that a large harm can be done, uh, but it's again this mentality shift which you need to work on in the next uh, years to try to promote it if you want to have it as a tool. Uh, there are some research settings uh, and private providers. And I will show you what we did in Poland and in terms of private prep uh, if you would like to expand it uh, in your country. Uh, unfortunately, there is suboptimal uh, PrEP reception in the adult population, especially in the Central Europe. Uh, so please take a look that it's uh, less than five people mostly per 100,000 of the adult population. Uh, obviously, this is not the best statistic because uh, it doesn't count MSM exactly, but again, it's very difficult to count the MSM population, especially in the setting where there is a lot of stigma and when disclosure of your sexuality uh, is not the most welcome. For Poland, it's basically impossible to count the number of MSM which we have, and in many of the central European countries, this would also be the issue. Uh, another issue are the costs of the drug, uh, which is going down. So I think this goes down from high importance to, uh, medium, uh, to medium importance or low importance, but also technical capability. Again, technical capability, if you think about this, is not a very big issue. You need a good consultation, you need basic tests, uh, creatinine. Uh, uh, normally full blood count, hepatitis serology, uh, vaccination status for B, uh, and cost of a service delivery, if it's paid by the patient, it adds to the cost. So it depends on the system, uh, either it's partially funded or, uh, or it's funded entirely by the patient, but I think these costs now are not that high. Actually, what you also need for the PrEP, and we have developed that for Poland, and it is available, we will publish it in English uh, as well this year, uh, are the national guidelines. Because it's good to have a guideline mostly for the primary healthcare physicians if you want to roll it out so they, that they know what to do on each visit, first visit, uh, first month visit, and then on every three month visit like it's stipulated in the EACS guideline. So uh, it's best to optimize these guidelines. And please note that you will have what we have been discussing, cases of Hep C in the PrEP population. So you will need to have a direct testing uh, on Hep C. Uh, there are demonstration pro projects available, uh, Georgia, Moldova and Ukraine uh, mostly, and this will be uh, also uh, expanded uh, in the near future. But if we would look at the barriers to PrEP, uh, again there is a huge discussion mostly on funds, but also on the information. So most of the people do not receive PrEP because they don't know that it exists, especially key populations like high-risk MSM. They start knowing what the PrEP is. Uh, in our setting in Poland, uh, this information is spread mostly mouth to mouth. Uh, in large cities, people from small cities or uh, medium cities do not even have idea what the PrEP is and on the other hand they mostly migrate for the party to the large cities, uh, have unprotected sex and get infected or get exposed. Now there is a discussion, should we medicalize it or not? Uh, should we have it available in the limited facilities or should it have it uh, very broadly? So it, it is still discussion which is going on. Uh, I think it should be as simple as possible, but not too simple, not to miss the STI and not to miss the opportunity also for the testing. Actually, uh, stigma and political and legislative support, uh, for example, in our country we do not see the option for the legislative support within the next five years. Uh, maybe it will change, but I really do not think so. So, the next quote for you uh, as we continue. Uh, 
you can resist anything except for the temptation. Uh, so this is about the survey on MSM. And look, this is a huge survey uh, on uh, PrEP in Europe uh, and actually risks and an STI. One, more than 100,000 people have been responding. Have you ever heard of PrEP? Mostly not. Uh, so if no, somebody didn't, haven't, haven't, haven't even heard about PrEP, they will not receive it. Uh, and you, as you will see as this data unfolds, they become more and more scary. Uh, there is a very small percentage taking PrEP in this sample. This was internet sample. Uh, obviously, the countries which have PrEP free, they have more coverage. Central Europe is lagging in this, in this, uh, in this context and it's needed here uh, as well. Mm. So you can take a look on the number of respondents from uh, your region, from your country, and it's uh, mostly for the Central Europe, again, less than 1% uh, of uh, MSM who responded to the survey to be on PrEP. So it's suboptimal, totally it's 7%, but for our region it's less than 1%. So it has to be discussed, it has to be thought about, and it uh, has to be uh, promoted if we want to change the epidemiology, otherwise uh, we will not have uh, any change. Uh, again, another survey uh, done by the Holder, uh, Hornet and ECDC uh, on PrEP. This sample is slightly uh, smaller. Uh, it's uh, 12,000 people, but uh, also, I think, decent coverage. Uh, so please take a look what is going on with PrEP here. Uh, only uh, s more, only uh, 40 6% of people receive PrEP via formal setting, so either via research facility or physician. And there will be a number of people who receive it via internet, uh, via friend sharing, especially uh, people who know about PrEP, so this would be PrEP on demand, even driven PrEP, or after post-exposure prophylaxis. So again, uh, not very small sample, but there is a huge pressure uh, on PrEP, and there will be things which we do not see uh, in this context. Uh, obviously, people who are on post-exposure prophylaxis will be more likely to be on uh, pre-exposure prophylaxis. Uh, I'm telling you, I'm destroying all the systems. Yeah. Okay, we are back on track. Uh, one more back. And also, obviously, people who are taking PrEP uh, will be more likely to be tested for STIs. Uh, why? Again, STI testing is embedded into PrEP, and if we integrate pills, counseling, uh, STI testing, uh, Hep C testing, and possible li linkage to the Hep C uh, treatment, uh, this is like an integrated response for the population in need. So this is quite an important thing. Uh, people on PrEP have more STIs, we know that. Uh, but uh, it is the issue and it will be the issue because for us the largest and the most expensive part of PrEP is the STI testing, especially molecular testing for chlamydia and gonorrhea. It is not reimbursed, uh, and you need to know what your country's statistics is. But this statistics is largely not known. Uh, MSM populations in the context of chlamydia and gonorrhea in Central Europe are underdiagnosed. Either they do not disclose the status uh, of the sexuality, so this will be something which is underdiagnosed, and we will see this and we will have to deal with this. So, uh, again, medicalize or not medicalize, but if we want to address STIs in the setting of PrEP, we will have to have good uh, medical consultations as well. And now I was sometimes wondering, uh, again, an anxiety and depression, please take a look how much an anxiety and depression in this population uh, is, and this is increasing from west to east 
so more stigma, more like an anxiety, more depression, and sometimes you ask this question, is PrEP and Chemsex a way to, to deal with depression and anxiety and feeling of loneliness? Maybe yes, maybe, well, maybe not, we will not be answering this. So the subsequent quote for you uh, as we progress uh, from our poet of today, morality is simply the attitude we adopt towards people we personally dislike, so we speak about condom and condomless sex here. Uh, so uh, please take a look again from this large sample uh, of uh, more than uh, 100,000 people, people who have had condomless sex with casual partner. So 120 uh, 6,000 is a sample, 68% of these people has had at least one casual partner within the last year and uh, from 15 to 30% has had condomless anal intercourse. So this tells you again how important is PrEP for this population because if you want to have less HIV it is the target to deal with. You will not change behavior, I believe. And again, sex and stimulants. So we have been discussing chemsex yesterday. Wonderful talk. Uh, chemsex and modalities, sex on stimulants. Again, if you think about sex uh, and stimulants, you have to start with alcohol. Uh, who hasn't had alcohol before a uh, nice encounter? Uh, it is a rhetoric question, please do not raise your hands. Uh, thank you. Uh, but again, if we, I have just found in the Telegraph this very nice study, uh, alcohol makes you look more attractive, scientists claim, uh, with the photos taken that after one, one drink of wine, um, you are, uh, your skin is better, you have better color, so you seem uh, in, the, um, in the eyes of a, uh, of a partner more attractive after the first drink. It doesn't apply to the second one, obviously, when you think you are more attractive. Uh, okay, on the other hand, our poet doesn't agree too much to this. Okay, and this is, I think, the most beautiful quote for today uh, about love, uh, because they sing a song only you can hear. Uh, okay, and now, sex, drugs, and maybe acute hep C, it will be told, it, it, it has been discussed, it will be discussed, it's everywhere, but please again take a look at this statistic. Have you ever, again from the same group, tried these are illicit drugs like cannabis, ecstasy powder, amphetamines? This is a large group of people, 40% have tried cannabis, and if we talk about things which are considered m more associated with hemsex, which improve uh, sexual performance and sexual pleasure, like methamphetamine and uh, synthetic stimulants and G GHB uh, and cocaine. Uh, look, again, quite a large number of people. So we know that it is actually linked uh, with STI, that it's linked with high-risk behavior and that it's linked with uh, acute hep C. Uh, very similarly, uh, people on PrEP uh, have been more exposed uh, to chemsex, but it's only, it doesn't mean anything. Again, we, it may mean that these people who are on chemsex seek PrEP more and they are better informed, uh, so it, is, it doesn't have to be the other way around. Uh, and uh, actually this, uh, I must admit, it started with this quote. I, this was the first one which I, I encountered and this is why I decided to uh, implement these quotes for you to make your life a little bit more interesting for this afternoon. But uh, if you look at the summary of this report, there is a huge number of unmet needs in this population. Uh, so, need for safer sex. Many people do not know about STI and uh, problems with condomless sex. Uh, but also, we would think that everybody knows about Hep, C vaccine, hep B vaccination or viral hepatitis A vaccination and 41% uh, do not know that you could refer to your doctor and request for that. So, this is a huge field uh, which is uh, under 
under addressed, we could say, uh, and uh, many people don't even know that the vaccine exists. But if we would look further, 65% uh, of respondents didn't even know uh, that post-exposure prophylaxis exists. Uh, and actually, with PrEP, if we, since we are talking about PrEP, there is under mm, there is suboptimal knowledge about intermittent PrEP, uh, PrEP at all. Uh, many people have never heard of PrEP. So this is a missed intervention. And look at the last one. Unmet need for HIV testing and treatment. 33% do not know that people on effective treatment uh, cannot transmit HIV. Uh, so it's a huge gap in the knowledge and we do not address uh, this gap still, I think. So how can we develop PrEP? You need a group of enthusiastic or at least willing doctors or individuals and nurses and paramedics or whatever. You need a set of national guidelines which may be implemented. It can be very simple. It can be guidance. It doesn't have to be guideline. Uh, you need uh, some kind of network because you need to know people who can uh, establish it into your city. Uh, education for patients and basically you need a bottom-down initiative uh, for PrEP. So this is what we did in Poland knowing that our political situation will not be Able, will not allow us to do something different. Uh, so PrEP is private. Uh, there is a website uh, which provides a cost and amount of uh, and, uh, and addresses to clinic which is dedicated to promotion. We have now uh, several sites. I think at the moment it's more or less 10 sites where you can call, you can have a prayer visit. It's usually paid or co-paid. It depends uh, on your insurance, so sometimes you can bring your own results in, uh, not, to, not to expand the cost. The cost of a visit, medical visit, is approximately 20 to 30 euro for PrEP, then you have a PrEP cost, and uh, the treatments, uh, the, the, uh, the, the lab results depends, uh, depend on the patient. Uh, we have more or less 100 1,500, 2,000 people on PrEP. Uh, this I didn't translate from Polish just to show you that this is our guidelines on the PrEP initiation and we have guidelines for every visit. Uh, and uh, we also have created the app for PrEP, uh, which I will show you. Uh, because we didn't want PrEP to be only the pill, we want a, a complex uh, response and complex also education. So we want the, prep, uh, the app to uh, give you the measures to uh, integrate care, the possibility to test, where to test, what PrEP is, what PEP is. I will show it uh, in a second. So uh, in the app that we have, we have a testing schedule, we have vaccination plan planner, we have pill timer, we have healthcare in identification, and we have uh, STI information, and this is it. If you want, it's free of charge, of either on Android or Apple. The keywords is PrEP HIV. I haven't come up with a name yet. Uh, English version uh, is being improved. It doesn't have the uh, STI description yet, but I will, uh, I will uh, also do this. So this is the panel that we uh, that that we have sexual health, uh, and it has, uh, like the first start prep now, is a timer which adds to your calendar and reminds you every day on a, on a prep pill and a short description uh, about adverse effects, about uh, the use, uh, very, very brief ones. Also, there is an, a part on post-exposure prophylaxis which reminds you that you basically have 48 hours. Uh, also, it has uh, the timer, if you are on, on, on PEP, it will add to the calendar. And the feature, which I like very much, which can be implemented even not in people who want or use PEP, is the vaccination schedule. So once you click 
um, hepatitis A, your possible vaccine will come out and it will also add to the calendar and remind you on the second dose. If you miss it, it will remind again and at the end of the possibility, window of possibility, it will give you the final warning that you haven't revaccinated yourself. So it will uh, remind you on the vaccine as well. Also to make patients life easier, uh, these are uh, call directly via app, na navigate directly or find the website of a PrEP provider. And if you would like um, us to make it in your own language, with your own clinics, with your own centers, uh, you are we are happy to provide uh, such a uh, such an option for everyone, uh, free of charge. We have informatician who would do it. Now we have Polish and English, but and in England, actually, if you would click in English, if you would click clinics, you would have Thai ones because we have uh, we have shown it to Thai people. Uh, we do not have any other clinics, but if you would like to have it in Ukrainian, Belarusian, Russian. Uh, any language we would be happy to, to do, but you would have to help us with translations. Obviously, we, the last thing we think of, uh, and I just want to signalize that, is uh, the resistance on PrEP. It will probably not be that much of a challenge, but it's, it remains to be seen. And then you have this, sometimes somebody comes in and you think, okay, would I give them PrEP or not? Uh, so the, Probably common people uh, who come from time to time are people who are not eligible for Hep B treatment, for example, in Poland, uh, who have low replication of Hep B. Uh, would you give PrEP or not give? Mostly we give, but we warn about the flare possibility. Would you give PrEP? start PrEP in 76 year old. This is a true case. Uh, the, 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 the guy said, and one of my friends said, how often do you have sex? And he said, three times a week. And she said, okay, sure, here is your PrEP. Uh, one kidney person, uh, still it's uh, nephrotoxic. Would you start PrEP uh, in a person with one kidney? It's a risk uh, assessment, what is worse, what is better. It is not to medicalize it, but you have to think about it. Again, the true case. What would we do? So you need some, uh, some support. Only oral, oral sex, but it depends if there is a chem sex. What about partners? Pregnant lady with a partner on PrEP. Partner is on PrEP, so theoretically he has and he admits to the, um, to the risk and the lady is theoretically protected, but what if it's, again, PrEP is 90% efficacious, it's not 100%. So uh, these are all these practical things that you need to consider in your own mind and that we do. So I finish not with summary, but with questions. Uh, will anybody be using condoms in the near future? As uh, thinking of HIV, so uh, in the fear of HIV. Will every MSM or will every or should every young person have at least pre one prep bottle uh, in, the, uh, in the drawer just in case? Uh, how and should we uh, not judge people and abandon our judgment? Obviously, we infectious disease specialists do not judge anybody, so you know that perfectly that we are not judgmental. Some doctors are, but I don't know them. Uh, uh, and what about uh, chemsex setting? How can we help? Or maybe these people do not need help. They need our advice. So uh, many of these slides were thanks to Tame and Nori. So I have not been too long, I hope. And this is the final quote for you. Thank you. <laughs>